we're in Roswell, New Mexico, and we're at the UFO Museum. It's for making monsters in the travel channel. Yeah. This is the music part. That's one of the excuses. Project Mogul. Um, I think these are some drawings. People who said they saw it. We were just in the Roswell Spacewalk Blacklight Adventure. And it was, uh, it was a good time. It was five bucks. Uh, everything was kind of lit up. Uh, you should see in our video. So, fun and times. Fun. Cheap throw. A little scary. A little hokey. A lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. Okay. It's an LED light. It's not hot. You're okay. more than welcome to pick it up and move it in any direction you want. So is this like 1970s circa graffiti? Well, no. Believe it or not, I, we, didn't, we didn't have much of that here. Hmm. At least not the paint. Everybody, all that we ever did was the, you know, the chalk from the drywall. And if you didn't like it, you just took a damp cloth and wiped it off. Wiped it off, it off yeah. I, mean, it's, I don't understand the paint, really. Um, oh. What you're seeing here is, 
Yes, obviously, you can see the missile silo doors. Those are 75 tons each up above your head. Right. And you can see they're offset. They're not directly in the center of this because these would have been considered the equipment area. You'll notice the upright beams. Yes. And you'll notice the gray beam over there to the side. That was part of the rail for the launch platform or the four-story elevator that I was telling you about. That would lift the missile. Holy uh, crap. The missile enclosure area, again, was completely separate because it was spaced off between those four uprights. Right. Where you would be right here, you could look through a window in a door. We would be at the level of the re-entry vehicle. Okay. Which really oh. had to be pretty wild. I've talked to a couple of friends that they were children. Their fathers worked on the sites out here. And they said they just remember standing here and looking through the window and looking at the re-entry vehicle. Let's see over here. So I used to be the old personnel freight As you can see, it looks like an elevator. And then what really should get you is you notice these mounts here in four locations, mounts, struts, and springs. Oh, okay. This entire structure is suspended. There is nothing holding it to the ground. Really? Yeah, we can, we can put an 18-story building in the ground. <sighs> we can suspend nearly 4 million pounds. Wow. wow. Those are some big springs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, $22,055,000. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Where are those, or that tunnel up there go to? Those are, those are two air vents. Behind those are 42-inch blast valves. Hmm. Yes. And when you're on the surface, look to the east. Okay. You will notice two big, long aluminum. They almost look like jet engines. They were originally attached to see the white outline. It oh, looks yeah. like yeah. a plenum. They were attached to the left of the vertical white line. Okay. And what they were were air washers. They spun to bring the air in from the surface and then they washed it with mist to take all of the dirt and everything out of it before it was moved around inside oh, the silos. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then above your head are the exhaust, which behind you. Uh, Oops, sorry. Again, That's all right. They're just right here. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. And then these were the manifolds that came up from the two diesel generators over. The plenum has been removed, is what's occurred. And so you really don't see that. But this is amazing. <laughs> this, is, this is something else. Yeah. Now, if you look down here, you'll see a spiral staircase. And it's fallen over. You can see it right there on the left, and it's fallen over to the side. Oh. When we were kids, we go down this cable thread, which acted as a ladder. Right. And we'd go down it a couple levels, and we'd walk around and hit that spiral staircase, take it all the way down to level seven. In the last 50 feet, it's a built-in ladder. Wow. And the spiral staircase went from there, went clear up to level one. This is level two. You can okay. see where level one originally oh. went across, oh, and yep. of course, it's been removed. Yeah. So what is this like for you to be in this structure that you played in as a child? It's, you, you, it, you treat it like a baby. Yeah. You treat it like a firstborn. I mean, I kid you not. Yeah. Um, I have been offered lots and lots of stuff. I've been, I've, been, I've been offered some of the most craziest things in the past 30 years yeah. uh, regarding every harebrained idea to do with some of these things. Some of them I won't let you know because Gosh! Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. But see, that's as far as I take the negative side of it. I don't like the vibes. Huge, isn't it? Don't close it out of the way just in case. 
That's crazy. Oh yeah, see those teeth go in there, huh? So here we are at a missile silo. We stayed here last night. Craziest place to spend the night. Um, right behind me are the doors that used to open and a missile would come from about 80 feet below all the way up um, through these doors and another 10 feet before it would be launched. And it would go up the extra 10 feet to protect the um, crew from, the launch crew from getting burned up. Fortunately, it was never used. This site was decommissioned in around 1964. We got to stay here last night. Gary is over there in his pickup truck, getting ready to leave, go back to El Paso, where he lives with his wife one week and then he comes they come back here another week so every other week they come back here so it was a really cool evening of touring the silo uh, Gary has made a little apartment down there so he rents it on Airbnb he also like rents like how we did for uh, hip camp that was pretty awesome you can see Gary on his YouTube channel at Silo Man. He, I don't know why our entire country doesn't know about him, honestly. He is a fascinating wealth of information. He knows about all of the 72 missile silos that were built in the early 60s for about $6 billion and then decommissioned in 64. So not even really used, but probably did their job in the Cold War to show that America was strong and had a lot of missiles we could we could fire at will. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoy our underground tour. And here we are on the outside in the morning, taking a look around. Join us next week in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, when Cupcake has a flat tire.